Beginning on July 29, 2022, thousands of gallons of liquid containing hexavalent chromium were released into the Huron River waterways from the Tribar Manufacturing Facility in Wixom, violating state environmental laws. This resulted in sections of the Huron River being closed with a no-contact advisory from EGLE, the Michigan Department of the Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. On August 10th, several hundred local residents, politicians, and members of the media gathered at Hebner's Canoe Rental in Milford, Michigan. One common theme was to pass House Bill 4314, the Polluters Pay Act, which would restore a law that was eliminated in 1995 during the Governor Engler administration. People at the rally were urged to call their representatives to pass the bill and to vote in November for representatives that would protect our waterways, one of Michigan's greatest natural resources. There were also calls to have Tribar held accountable and possibly shut down for this environmental violation and for a release of PFAS into the waterways four years ago. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, thank you to all the members of the press who are here. My name is Sean McBrady, and I'm the Legislative and Policy Director for Clean Water Action. Um, and I especially would like to thank Bruce and Alan Hevner of Hevner Canoe Rental for hosting this event, um, as well as Heather and Scott Armstrong from Village Canoe Rental for joining us today. I'd also love to thank our volunteers from Sierra Club and Clean Water Action for helping organize this. Uh, Chairman Woodward, Floor Leader Robbie, and Mona Shand from uh, Congresswoman Slotkin's office for joining us today. Right. I'd also like to thank uh, Senator Peters, I believe sent a staffer today um, as well. And I'd also like to thank all of the committed Michigan activists and business leaders who are here today standing with us, and the 51 other state house representatives and state senators that co-sponsored polluter pay legislation during this term. For members of the media, after uh, each speaker has time to share, we'll have a few minutes for questions uh, from members of the media, both live and via Zoom. Today we're here standing on the shores of the beautiful Huron River, a water body that generations of Michiganders have fished, swam, canoed, and kayaked, and worked to preserve and protect from pollution. Last week, Tribar Manufacturing released thousands of gallons of effluent containing hexavalent chromium into the sewer system, which made its way into this beautiful river. While state authorities are still assessing the extent of the damage done, we know that instances of contamination like this one not only impact the river's ecosystem, but in a larger sense, they impact the reputation of our water a reputation that so many good local businesses, like the canoe and kayak businesses here with us today, uh, rely on for business. Today in Michigan, we have over 24,000 contaminated sites across the state, with more being added to that with each passing year. Last year, the State Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy could only afford to address roughly 200 of those 24,000 sites. This is not a sustainable system. Far more funding is needed to clean up contaminated sites and waterways, and we have to end this toxic mode of understanding that treats contamination of our natural resources as merely another cost of doing business. But we shouldn't have to rely on taxpayer dollars to clean up a mess made entirely by corporate polluters. This is nothing but another giveaway to corporate polluters while Michigan residents and taxpayers bear the burden. For years, for years, strong legislation has been proposed in Lansing to make polluters pay to clean up the damage they cause. However, the majority in our legislature, backed by por corporate polluters and powerful industry lobbyists like the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, have ensured that these bills aren't even given a hearing. The recent Tribar spill is yet another glaring example of why action must be taken. This is not the first time that both Michigan residents and family-owned Michigan businesses have been impacted when polluting corporations break the rules. And without immediate legislative action, this won't be the last time. Now I'd like to introduce a resident who's been impacted by this spill and a member of the Sierra Club, Tiffany Stewart. We moved to Milford 15 years ago because we wanted to be closer to nature, be among the green spaces and the beautiful waterways, a place where observing nature within nature wasn't a rare experience, but an everyday occurrence. We have that here, 
or we had that here. Now we're not allowed to have contact with the water, and who knows when we'll, we will be able to again. And there is potential threat to the drinking water for those downstream, all because of negligence. Negligence on behalf of Tribar Technologies that has, for the second time in four years, released toxins into our waterways. Negligence on behalf of our automakers who choose to work with companies that use outdated, extremely toxic plating methods. And negligence on behalf of our government and legislators for removing and not reinstating our polluter pay laws to hold businesses accountable for their messes. Instead, we pay. Literally, as taxpayers, we pay to clean up someone else's mess. I met Alan Hevner many years ago because we share a passion for the outdoors, for educating others on the importance of and our responsibility for protecting our natural spaces. Today we stand with you in a fight to keep Tribar's toxic waste out of our waterways and educate others that it too is their responsibility to do the same. As Erin Brockovich, who I'm sure most of you are familiar with, and her fight with hexavalent chromium, posted on social media last week in response to this tragic event. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Are we really going to wait and see what Tribar chooses to poison our river with for a third time? I thank you for your passion and that you take this frustration and anger and convert it into constructive action. Contact your legislators and let them know you demand strong polluter pay laws. Contact Tribar's clients and let them know you demand they choose more environmentally friendly companies and processes. So that this doesn't happen in our community again or anyone else's. And vote for people that are going to protect our natural spaces. pass laws to prevent these spills from happening in the first place. Someone who's going to protect you. There are many amazing groups here today and QR codes scattered around. Please connect with them because our fight doesn't end today. Thank you and now I'd like to introduce Alan and Bruce Hevner of uh, Hevner Canoe Rental. Hello, I'm Bruce Hevner, co-owner of Hevner Canoe Rental. I've been a part of the Huron River all my life from visiting grandparents and what is now my family home up on the hill, to working summers at our small family business that grandma started in 1953, to moving my family to the area to continue our family legacy. I have many fond memories of growing up on the Huron, and I hope to add many more, many more memories for my kids and beyond. Now under third generation management, our business has dropped 70% in the week since the do not contact recommendation was issued. But while our livelihood and others on the river are directly and materially impacted, the loss of business is not the most important topic here. While water sampling tests will determine what we're allowed to do downstream from us, it's very important to note that some of the Huron is not impacted by the pollution that is being reported today. We know for sure that from the launch that we're standing at today, which my family has operated for 69 years, all the way upstream through Proud Lake recreation area and beyond into Commerce Lake is not affected. So that part of the, Hur the beautiful Huron River remains open for recreation and for business. As test results continue to come back well within federally accepted levels, our hope and prayer is that we will discover the crisis may actually have been contained before it hit the river and that Eagle will shift the expected boundaries and reopen the full river so that we can all enjoy the nature we're blessed to be surrounded by. But our tagline and our mission to the community is no child left inside. And when people can't come out and enjoy the beautiful river because of a state mandated order, that mission is at risk. A moment ago, I said the loss of business is not the most important concern. Rather, the more important thing in our opinion is the loss of experiences. 
of kids, families, scout groups, and school groups that come out year after year, of wildlife, the fish, the birds, the turtles, and other animals that call our river home and use it for a water source. If there's a chemical in the river, what happens to them? These lost experiences are what we are most concerned about. Now I'd like to introduce Alan Hevner, the second generation of Hevner Canoe Rental, to share about uh, a bit about of the many years of experiences he's witnessed from customers and the general public using the river for recreation. Thank you very much. I never thought that there would be somebody else in the Hefner family that would do better than what I could say if I was standing here right now. My nephew Bruce did a great job of saying the whole thing in a nutshell. Thank you, Bruce. Um, I, I do want to, uh, there's several, many people here, but but uh, uh, Heather Armstrong is going to speak in a minute, but the Village Kenya Rental and myself have been partners for years. We've been working so well together, furthering the message of No Child Left Inside. That No Child Left Inside mission is not something we invented that we support. And now we've had to extend it to all ages because we have seniors that don't know how to enjoy the outdoors. So we that message goes to everybody, all walks of life. The the people that aren't working at all, the, the presidents of manufacturers coming out. We have a lot of corporate stuff we do here. The message is the hero of us is this wonderful outdoors we stand in. It's not just the river. The river is a method to get kids and adults out to discover what's already here. I'm going to get a little emotional because my first summer here was living in a tent behind this building that wasn't here. My mom and dad struggled for years, and after 10 years, we had a tornado come through, took our eight canoes that we had and destroyed them. So my mom has been gone about 10 years now, but Stella Hefner is the reason that we're here, and my dad, Chester, too. But anyway, the, the, the thing I wanted to say is that just this week, is in preparation for this, I had a gentleman come out. He's the fifth generation that's canoed here. He was very elderly. He couldn't get in the canoe, but there was four more generations under they went out in the river and every one of them said, this whole world is changing. But <clears throat> what hasn't changed is when you get on the canal here and go up the river to Proud Lake and uh, onto the lake, the Proud Lake campground, the, the wilderness area here has never been changed. The trees that are out here now, mom planted those trees to have sort of a place for people to gather. So I'm just saying that the history of Hebner's goes way back and I'm just proud to be part of it. My nephew Bruce is doing a great job He's got a team now. We've had a great year. The impact of our business, however, the message has not yet been received that the river is still available for people, not just with raining boats. This is not a commercial for Hebner's. The increase of people with their own boats now coming in this year has probably doubled from last year. We welcome everybody to come. This is a state launch site. It's free. They can launch here and still go up into the Proud Lake area. Uh, beautiful up there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. And now I'd like to pass the podium and the microphone on to Representative Yusuf Ravi. Well, my friends, I want to start off by thanking all of you for being here today. This is truly incredible to see this many people showing up for our river. Let's hear it for yourselves for being here. But I also want to give a special shout out to the kiddos that are here. Let's hear it for the kiddos. Thank you all for being here. I see you guys. Thanks for showing up. You got great signs. I love the energy. So I asked my colleague Felicia Brabeck to join me up here at the podium. Thank you, Felicia, for being here with all of us. Felicia represents part of the city of Ann Arbor. Um, I also, I know other elected officials were giving a shout out to. Um, I was on the phone with Debbie Dingle, and uh, she wishes she could be here, and she sends her, um, you know, definitely her support for what we're doing here today. So Debbie is with us. I also, on my drive here, was on the phone with Kelly Breen. Um, she would, wanted to be here as well. We have a lot of support out there, people that are here for us to help push this message. Also on my drive up here, I was drinking water to stay <laughs> hydrated. Water that came out of my tap in Ann Arbor. The water that I drank is now becoming my blood. When I feel my heart beat, that's the water that's pumping through it. That's not just a river. That's me. It's all of us. Water is life. Water is life. 
There is no reason, no reason that an irresponsible polluter that has no regard for human life should be allowed to continue to operate full stop. Shut them down. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Shut them down. They should not be allowed to continue operating. It wasn't four years ago that they dumped toxic PFAS in our river. They made it so we couldn't eat the fish. They made it so we had fear all across our city about the water that was coming out of our tap. People weren't able to use the river. How is it that in just four short years, here we are, back at the same place, with the same company, different chemical. How can that be allowed? They need to be shut down, they need to be held accountable. GM, Ford, every single manufacturer needs to stop doing business with them. But here's the other thing. I want them sued into oblivion. We need to recapture every dollar that we possibly can from that company. Why should taxpayers have to pay to clean up the mess that some company made? For profit. They benefited from the pollution that they put in our river. They made money off of our lives. That should be recaptured. We should be suing them into oblivion. Using that money to clean our river, using that money to put new filtration systems in our city water treatment facility. Why should ratepayers and taxpayers have to pay for that? It, we know who the polluter is. They're the ones that were profiting off of it. They're the ones that should pay to clean it up. And that, unfortunately in the state of Michigan, we have weak laws when it comes to holding polluters accountable. And let's do a little history lesson here and remember that we have had strong polluter pay laws in Michigan. We used to have strong polluter pay laws. But as my friend behind me here, I'm not sure exactly who said it, but as my friend behind me here said, because of our former governor, we no longer have those laws. Can I get a loud and resounding boo for John Angler, please? Yes, thank you. So because of him, we no longer have strong polluter pay laws in Michigan. When I got elected to the legislature in 2017, the first bill that I introduced was a law to reinstate polluter pay in the state of Michigan. That was back in 2017. That was back in 2017. We were under full Republican control. The Michigan Manufacturers Association, which by the way is run by people that used to work for John Angler, and the Chamber of Commerce and other organizations stopped at nothing to make sure that bill didn't pass. Next term, I got reelected. First bill I introduced, polluter pay. This term, polluter pay. This term, it is House Bill uh, 4314. 4314. It is in the House Natural Resources Committee. And so far, they have still not even given it a hearing. They have still not even given it a hearing. And why? Because companies like Tribar, companies, frankly, like GM and Ford, and other big manufacturers across our state, are part of a group called the Michigan Manufacturers Association and the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. They are preventing that bill from getting a hearing. This is not a partisan issue. This is something that Republicans and Democrats agree needs to happen. This is about protecting the environment. It's about protecting our water. It's about protecting taxpayers. It's about making sure that we are not placing value in one industry over another. Why is it okay that they can lose 70% of their business so that some other company can make hand over fist money. Why is that okay? Why are, we, why are we saying that some businesses can't operate? That is not okay. We as a state can do better. We have done better 
and frankly, we will do better. We will do better. But I need all of your help. Everybody in this space right now, everybody at home who's watching, I need you to call your legislators, and I want you to ask them to get a hearing and to pass House Bill 4314 out of committee onto the floor. Let's get it to the governor's desk. I know she'll sign it. We can do better here in the state of Michigan, and we have an opportunity to turn this state around for all the kiddos that are here to make sure that they don't have to live in a state where this kind of stuff happens. That is not acceptable. We are the Great Lakes State. We have always been proud of our natural resources, and we are not going to give up until this gets done. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. So my, my last duty up here at the mic is to introduce a good friend of mine. David Woodward has been doing fantastic work on the Oakland County Board of Commissioners as the chair. And I want to give him the opportunity now to speak. He has been a good friend of the environment fighting for this cause, and he is here today to share some words with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Representative. I bet you all didn't think you were coming to church today. Um, but, but the past... But, the, pass yeah, uh, the passion that Representative Robbie speaks about um, is, I mean, not only channeled, I mean, every single day that he shows up to work, but he's been on the front line fighting for polluter pay laws from the beginning and long before then. And um, I'm here today, I, I mean, again, my, I'm introduce myself, Dave Woodward, I'm the chair of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. And I, I mean, today want to make public that there are powerful interests that stand in the way of polluter pay laws in Michigan. I am prepared to announce today that we are going to put the full weight and political power of Oakland County behind the effort to pass polluter pay laws here in Michigan. We have uh, a long tradition of supporting legislatively these, th these very bills um, that uh, Representative speaks about, um, but we, we need to up the game. We're going to invest the resources to build the lobbying strength, to coordinate with all of our local communities, to lift up all of our collective voices to be able to do this. Because we know that what happened here can never be allowed to happen ever again. What happened, what happened here um, streaks at my, at my core. The, the first time that I was here, I was a student in high school. Um, part of an organization, Student for Environmental Awareness, coming every single day. It's what unlocked it, unlocked my passion for environmental activism and coming year and year again to do that, to bring my children out here to experience the outdoors. And as the Hefner family said, yeah, it hasn't changed out there. I can make paddle this thing blindfolded um, because, and it's so, I mean, it, and the, I mean, it, it is a symbol and it's, horrifying to me that terrible tragedies like this, polluting our waters, polluting our lakes, have to happen before we create the urgency to do what we know needs to be done. What needs to be done to protect our environment. It is not right for Oakland County, our local communities, the taxpayers of the state, to have to bear the cost to clean up the mess of a company that was reckless and irresponsible. Make them pay, they will pay, and we will be introducing the legislation to a firm support for the representative's legislation, putting the full resources of our county lobbyists behind it, working with the executive, working with our Oakland County Water uh, Resource Commissioner to make progress. And if we can't get it out of the chamber today, we have an opportunity to elect people, yep. to elect people in November. Do not elect anyone that will not support polluter pay laws. Thank you very much. And a, a great champion supporting us at a, at, a, at a national level is Congresswoman Slotkin. And to um, and deliver a message from her is um, her legislative aide, Mona Shan. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Mona. Hi, everyone. My name is Mona Shand. I am the Livingston County Field Representative and uh, District Press Secretary for U.S. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin. She represents all of Livingston County, so a good portion of the Huron River watershed. So this issue is very important to her. If you follow her at all, you know that she has been fighting for the past four years, successfully, I should say, to get stronger federal regulation of our drinking water when it comes to PFAS, largely because of what happened here in the Huron River. So she's uh, disappointed that she can't be here today, but she did want me to read a statement. And I will just add that as a former CIA 
uh, officer, she sees our water not just as an environmental issue, not just as an economic issue, but as a national security issue. If we can't protect our drinking water, if we can't protect our water, we can't protect ourselves. So I will share with you this statement that you can attribute to the Congresswoman. While it seems like the worst case scenario for the Huron River has not come to pass, a crisis averted can hardly be described as good news. We still have more questions than answers in this situation, and you have my commitment that I will do everything in my power to push for whatever answers we need from the federal level. Water is our gift here in Michigan, and as we gather here during the peak of summer recreation season, this spill has health, environmental, economic, and national security consequences. I'm calling on local leaders to get to the bottom of why this happened and to apply the most aggressive enforcement actions available. If we need new laws to go after polluters and repeat offenders, then our state lawmakers need to get to work. Repeat offenders. Yeah. These chemicals are dangerous. These chemicals are the subject of long-standing legal suits. And the EPA needs to set a standard based on health, and then companies need to live up to it. This is what we've done for PFAS. We pushed for federal regulation of these dangerous substances, and we can and we will do it again here. Thank you. And with that, I'll turn it back to Sean. Thank you very much, Mona, and thank you to uh, all of our other speakers, and uh, please pass along our you know, strong thanks for Congresswoman Slotkin's work to hold polluting corporations accountable and protect our water at the federal level. So now I'd like to open it up uh, for questions from members of the media, and if you could please identify yourself with your name, which outlet you're with, uh, and if you have a question for a specific speaker, go ahead and let us know. If not, I can hand it off to uh, the most appro appropriate person. So I know we have some reporters through a Zoom feed. We have some reporters here live with us today. We're going to start with those who are live with us here today. Any questions from the press? Yeah. I'm Carol from the Detroit News. A few minutes before this press conference, uh, the state announced that they were pursuing some violate had issued violation notices to Tribar and were pursuing full cost recovery. I wonder if you could comment on that, or if someone could comment on that and just explain, like, what in addition the state, like, what other tools there might be that you'd like the state to have. Sure. Well, thank you for the question. And um, yes, so progress obviously is a good thing. I'm glad that the state is doing this. When Eagle first called me to tell me about this issue, um, what I told them is you need to bring the hammer down on these people and absolutely make, just like what I said earlier, absolutely make them pay for what they've done here. And so I'm glad that that is, you know, the route that the state is going down. Again, as I said earlier, I think that Punitive damages are the first one to make sure that we can uh, recover our costs for cleanup. But beyond that, again, I don't believe Tribar should be operating. I don't believe that they should be allowed to continue to exist on the Huron River. I just, I just don't believe it. How, how is it okay that you have a drinking water intake downstream from a, a repeat offender, polluter, bad actor that, again, has clearly no regard for human life, no regard for animal life, no regard for our economy, and no regard for our national security, as Congresswoman Slotkin's representative said here today. Great, thank you. Any other questions from members of the media? If Trump Bar is allowed to stay open even past this, how much of a disappointment is that going to be for this entire community? That's a slap in the face to the people of Michigan who have had to pay to clean up after Tribar twice now. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I'm just thinking about, you know, what you've mentioned, repeated um, failure to get a hearing around polluter pay. Are there non-legislative solutions that you're interested in as well, given sort of the stalemate in the legislature on these issues? So the legislature is supposed to represent the people, not Michigan manufacturers, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. We elected them, not them. Um, so I think we need to get past the stalemate in the legislature. And if the people who are in office right now are unwilling to pass polluter pay, unwilling to even hold a hearing on it, they shouldn't be in office come January. Vote them out! Vote them out! Vote them out! Vote them out! 
I love this because it's like the people that are at the mic are not the only ones. Like, we're all at the mic. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Where's Matt Matter? That's right. So there's there's a lot of... So there's a, there's a lot of legislators, I think, that need to step up to the plate here and help make this happen. The other thing I'll say, too, like I said earlier, this is not a complicated concept. I think probably one of my like biggest moments where I was like maha moment, I guess. It was after I'd already introduced the bill initially, but I was going to read uh, for March's reading month. I was going to a school to read to kids um, and I walk into the classroom and these kids are telling me about polluter pay. And they're telling me about polluter pay in the context of like, if I'm at home and I spill a glass of milk on the counter, I have to clean it up. Nobody's gonna, you know, you learn this in elementary school. Why is Tribar held to a different standard than third graders? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, and can, again, can reporters just identify your name and outlet so we can keep track? We have two representatives that are not necessarily... Representing us here, come in, and they come from other areas that are affected by this. We have two representatives in Matt Maddock and uh, Runstead. Who do represent us? Where were they, they? Were they invited here? That's what I want to know. Were they invited? This was pretty widely advertised online. Any uh, other questions from members of the media? Cool, uh, Jen. Do we have any Zoom questions? Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And speakers will be available for a few minutes for follow-ups if media have them. Thank you very much. people and the impact this is going to have on the community. We don't want to get too political. Right, just tell me what you think should be done. Well, we need to reinstate the polluter pay act, definitely. But um, as far as being non-political, I grew up 500 feet from this river. My daughter got over her fear of fish, right up over in Proud Lake with her fifth grade camp. And now they can't even touch the fish. And this is just like heartbreaking. This is like my river. And it's, it's heartbreaking. And if you are voted into office, is this going to be one of the first things that you work on? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be bad because we haven't had it for two years because of the um, of COVID. And everybody has done more this year and they don't know if we can do it. We have Milford Memories coming up this weekend. We usually have canoe races and a, um, a duck race, and we don't know if that will happen. So we need this company held accountable. We need our community asset to stay safe and healthy for all of us and all of the environment around us.